Lovers, welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri here. Welcome to this video, welcome to Scoop School. We do want to thank our episode sponsor, Ice Cream Equipment Specialists. The internet's gone crazy over how many uh, comments and views about our last Popsicle video. It was a general overview of Popsicle. I'm gonna put the link down below. Look, I'm not gonna put the link down below. Madeline's gonna put the link down below. And you can look at that as a precursor to this, but we are gonna talk a little bit about bases today, what you can use as a base for a Popsicle or Paletta. And again, thank you to our good friends at Ice Cream Equipment Specialists who uh, give us a whole bunch of ideas, recipes, the equipments here we'll be using. Uh, their link is down below as well. Thank you very much, uh, great company. Okay, so there are a lot of different options when it comes to the base for your popsicles or palettas. You can go from basically water all the way up to your dairy products. So let's touch on them very quickly. Yep, sugar and water. Literally sugar and water you can start with. It's the least expensive way to make a popsicle. You are gonna need maybe some of this. Okay, so the, you will need some kind of stabilization because sugar and water um, needs to be able to play together well and this will give you longevity in the display case or however you're uh, displaying a popsicle. So a stabilizer, kind of like Stabilize from iRice, another great sponsor, Ding! will really help uh, in the overall smoothness, mouthfeel and longevity of the uh, popsicle. So you can literally use this as your base to get going. Okay, now you can go a little bit easier route and get a bag of sorbet base. This is a bag from uh, Classic Mix. It's a sugar water emulsion, and it's a great way to kind of circumvent any abnormalities with the sugar water balance. We're gonna talk about a refractometer in another video, but this primarily is your sugar water stabilizer solution all in one bag. Okay, you can just use juice. You can literally go to the uh, grocery store, wherever you get your juice from. You can go high-end juice, low-end juice, but that's another great non-dairy option. Literally just pouring juice into the molds and making juice pops. Now you can use IQF, individually quick frozen fruit. I was gonna throw some bananas around here. I was gonna throw, I was gonna do this. I was gonna go. <laughs> But if you've got more of a denser fruit, you need some water to kind of carry that flavor and carry the consistency. So that's why IQF fruit is good. And it can literally just be the fruit. Now, you will need to sugar this fruit. They call it masticating. So I've taken some of the IQF fruit, put sugar on it, and either put it in the microwave or let it sit overnight in the cooler. The sugar is gonna pull the water out, give you a simple syrup. So it's not just water in the berry freezing you've got some sort of pliability with the simple syrup. So you can literally just use IQF fruit and sugar. Okay, you can go full send. You can go your ice cream mix. Uh, this is a mix from uh, uh, Lloyd's of Pennsylvania. Again, another great sponsor of the podcast. And you can literally pour your ice cream mix into your molds. Now, there's been a little bit of conversation about what's better. Do you just pour the mix in by itself? Or do you actually run it through a batch freezer, give it some overrun, some air, and give you a little bit more volume? Well, a couple of things. Your mix only is going to be quite a dense, almost like a um, ice confection pop. It's not gonna have a lot of smoothness and creaminess to it. It's more dense. Your uh, overrun-based pop, or if you put this through the batch freezer, We'll have a little bit more volume. It'll be a little bit more um, smoother on the mouth feel. You really wanna make sure that you don't have too much overrun or you don't get too much firmness in it because then it can't pour into the molds. So there are your options basically from just sugar and water all the way up to your regular mix. Um, and you can use all of them as a base basically to then add flavor to them. And that's what we're gonna do in the next couple of videos. So uh, again, experiment with the base. The base provides the foundation for all of your flavors. And the beauty of having a popsicle machine is you can basically experiment till the cows come home. That's all we have for this video, but we are doing more on popsicles. As we say at the end of every video, well, I was gonna throw to the, but I nearly didn't thank Evan. So again, thank you to Ice Cream Equipment Specialists. Their link is down below, and as we say, can I just say there's been a few comments on the delivery of the, the delivery of the, what are we going to call this, Madeline? The, 
I'm not going to say the delivery of the finger. We'll work on that. But anyway, keep on scooping. We'll see you in the next video.